Welcome to the Zenov podcast. You are listening to our business resilience series where we bring to you conversations with eminent industry stalwarts and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their insights on overcoming challenges and the mindset that helps them navigate through journeys of crisis resilience and growth. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Zenov podcast. I'm Pari Nadrajan, CEO of Zenov and your host for today. This podcast is about business resilience. But there are leaders who have been able to build systems and processes that allows organizations to go beyond resilience and become anti-fragile. These are organizations that get better when they face both external and internal stresses. Today we have with us one such leader, Dominic Seduti, CEO of Altran. Dominic has more than 25 years of industry experience and has led Altran over the last few years. through a major transformation welcome dominic thank you pari it's uh, really a pleasure and a privilege and thank you for giving me the opportunity to discuss this important topic of uh, business resilience and by the way i, I believe it's particularly uh, a key in today's context of uh, pandemic or post pandemic and, and global economic crisis uh, in which time uh, all uh, large company must demonstrate their ability to protect their employees of course but of course ensure business resiliency and get back to normal uh, as soon as possible thank you very uh let's dive into the questions dominic uh, altran has been through a significant growth and evolution of its footprint over the last few years and has become a strong yet complex business how do you ensure that your business remains scalable and resilient during such a transformation in fact uh, peri resiliency or scalability is not something that we do on top Uh, of our transformation it is at the core of the transformation i'm going to be concrete to illustrate what i mean uh, over the last 5 years the altran team has has undergone through a, a significant transformation but uh, what did we do we we scaled the north america business from almost nothing in 14 to almost 1 billion dollar we went to very bold acquisition that were challenging like aris acquisition to be at scale in communication uh, and semicon we are by nature now multi industry we build superior global engineering centers in ukraine india morocco to give us um, uh, a footprint that we didn't have there in terms of delivery and we've been working free uh, synergistic service model focusing on the early stage innovation of our clients uh, then deployment at scale which is engineering services which we all, always did and now uh, as i said uh, um, kept being capable of working from uh, offshore delivery center so this gives us a significant resiliency uh, to any shock and we always knew that we would have one day to confront with another shock so we were running stress test uh, after the online crisis that that was a, a very huge turbulence and so on and uh, it is what we have done on resiliency scalability uh, just to illustrate we took the number of employees from uh, 19000 at the end of uh, 2014 to more than 50000 and um we, we we more than double the revenue we more than double the, the profit so by nature what we're doing is always uh with a view of industrialization to ensure scalability so resiliency scalability it's at the core of our transformation all the time and when you um started the transformation that was really during and uh, the economy was booming booming across industries but with the current um uh, covid crisis it's a, a truly a black swan event and what are some of the key aspects that you had to uh, do to ensure your business and service resilience as you went through this transformation in fact uh, and i i've been in touch with many ceo colleagues uh, including competitors during this crisis so i think we all uh, try to do the same uh, what we're doing at altran uh, appears to be uh, rather successful so the, the first uh, obsession in the early stage of the crisis was uh, people protection we've been obsessed regardless the 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 business or the financial returns we said we must uh, take care of our people and uh, i'm not going to go into detail but we spent several weeks including in um, uh, 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 renting a truck to repatriate our people where they, they needed to be and so on people protection then it was about uh, resist uh, meaning the, the business was was under significant pressure so we we took a breath and check where we had to go defend position and try to avoid a, a pure collapse and uh, we, we have been able to, uh, to do that we we now in what we call the restart uh, which is we have of course inherited a huge bench especially in auto and aero sector but not only while other sectors like communication uh, uh, are are booming 
So we're trying to uh, gradually uh, get all of our people back to work, uh, of course, discussing with clients and so on and so forth. But the last phase, back to your question, is, by the way, it's not about resiliency because, as you know, resiliency is the, 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 the capacity that an object or a company has to come back to initial state uh, after a stress. In fact, we're not trying to become resilient, we're trying to adapt, which is more than resiliency. What do I mean? We know that uh, some industry where we operate will be changed for almost ever. Typically, it is the aero uh, industry. Auto is also is going to be reset in terms of uh, the way they operate. So, in fact, we're now trying, and that will be a challenging but fascinating exercise for the upcoming one or two years, we're trying to be resilient and come back to normal where the industry will come back to normal. And we're trying to change the way we operate for industries that are being reset, like aero and uh, auto. So for, what does it mean? It means that we have inherited an overcapacity that will stay forever, that we will take care of through reskilling, uh, readapting our engineers because we don't want to lay off and redeploying them uh, in, in other industry. But we also see this crisis or post-crisis as an opportunity where we see uh, sectors that are booming uh, with uh, acceleration of electrical vehicles, for instance, in auto. So we are shifting significant resources uh, to those places. So protect, resist, restart. That was about resiliency. And the next phase is more than resiliency. It is adapt to new uh, market condition, which we see as, a, as an opportunity. In fact, there is an interesting uh, thinking in Aero, where everybody believed that uh, this industry is, is uh, I mean, destroyed, not at all. We have inherited overcapacity, but if you now check and re-baseline the Aero industry starting from now, it is still a growth industry. It will be a growth industry, but it's a matter of redeploying on new growth area in this domain. It's, uh, it's interesting that you're not just looking at resilience, but really adapting um, and and looking at this as an opportunity to reskill your team and look at some of the newer areas for growth. However, you added another layer of complexity, right? Because Altran is now part of Capgemini, uh, especially during, and it all happened during this um, lockdown period. And you are currently preparing the integration process. How do you ensure uh, these models are flexible enough to extend to the new structure? Yeah, in fact, uh, of course, we, we have such a large-scale acquisition because Cap spend... Uh, almost 6 billion, 5.6, 5.7 billion. So you can safely, of course, assume that they didn't do that by accident, nor just for size. It, it, it was based on complementary business complementarity and uh, a synergy uh, view. So that's helping us a lot. But for CAP, it was also something else. They took a lot of a long time to check that uh, we would have a cultural uh, proximity. We are engineers, they are a, a consultant, but at, at the end of the day, it is highly educated people who work for clients. So, but the complementarity of our business uh, and technology expertise helps a lot because at the end of the day, uh, and we see that because we've been together now for a month with uh, CAP, we speak the same language with the same passion for doing things for, for clients. We have a kind of similar corporate culture and values. Uh, I think I was one of the rare engineering group uh, in, in Europe, and I mean, right? to wire my group uh, with processes and standard that would look like the very large group. So that's helping a lot, uh, us a lot. I don't want to go into detail, it's a bit complex, but it means when we're discussing, for instance, primary PNL, secondary PNL, to have a large uh, uh, scale cooperation within the group, uh, we speak the same language. When we're discussing our global engineering center, we speak the same language with the same KPIs and what they have, so that's helping. Uh, there is strong alignment in our operating model. We have next core they have invent, uh, they are very strong in offshore. We are also very strong in offshore. So we recognize the same service model um, uh, in our organization. Uh, and we have the same obsessive view of aligning our uh, models through industrial projects uh, to go to the next level. Uh, so that's helping a lot. So it's not always easy. We go with them and they go with us extremely well because of the complementarity I mentioned. And that's not purely bringing flexibility, but it's putting oil in the system that looks like flexibility in the integration process, I would say. Uh, great to note that there are organic synergies between the two companies. And all the best with the integration process, Dominic. Uh, coming back to the topic of resilience and anti-fragility. Uh, resilience needs to be inherent across all facets of an organization. Leadership, employees, processes, customers, and even investors. How are you ensuring equal distribution of focus 
and resilience across all these dimensions? Uh, in fact, uh, the way we do that, or I do that, is I do not see any of the domain you're mentioning uh, being uh, uh, in isolation. I see an alignment between everything. You may remember when I was young, and I'm sure you're much younger than I, Barry, but you may remember this 7S methodology for McKinsey, right? Which yeah. is kind of, it has been largely publicized, but still it remains uh, um, uh, really accurate. What does he say? It means that you need to start with a strategy. Once you have your strategy to make sure that you're chasing the, the, the value where it is, you need to have a structure uh, that is aligned to your strategy. And then you need to have a staffing with your uh, uh, superior guys uh, uh, in this structure. Then you need to align your system uh, da, 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 until you go to the shared values and so on. And so that's the 7S McKinsey. Now, whatever the methodology, that's what I've always done uh, in my uh, business life. I, I do not work any of those domains in isolation. For me, strategy, organization, uh, acquiring a superior skills, uh, acquiring company, building my, my processes, working on my values, make, taking care of my people uh, through the values, it's always aligned. So if I touch something in one of those domains, if I modify my strategy or at modifying my organization because suddenly I want to go in Asia or in, in the USA, we always, with my team reiterating on the other domain, saying what does it mean? And including on your question, what does it mean on people and on motivation and on values and on inspiration? And that, that's what we do. Which is, by the way, one of the big, big, big pleasure that I have in business, uh, to be able to align all those domains all the time. Uh, it's amazing that how you are able to have a you know a systems thinking um, to defining strategy and and executing that relentlessly in spite of uh, both external and internal stresses uh, over the last few years. Um, thank you, Dominic, for sharing your insights uh, based on your experience leading Altran's transformation over the last few years. Yeah, I would also like to thank the audience for listening into this podcast. Oh, same on my side, Barry. Thank you very much for inviting me today. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you for listening to this episode of Zinov's Business Resilience Series. Stay tuned for more such interesting episodes and subscribe to our podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. To know more about Zinov, and if you believe we can help with your problems, please visit our website www.zinov.com or drop us a note at info at Thank you again, and don't forget to tune in to our next episode.